What's up guys, my name is Alex and this is Survive in Amsterdam. You know, we just settled down, finally unpacked our luggage, went to IKEA, uh, bought some stuff, for example, this table. I didn't have a table here. Got some lights because the, the apartment was pretty dark. And while doing all this stuff, I, I understood how happy we are that we got this apartment. And I just thought it would be nice to share with you guys my experience of searching for the apartment in another country not being here. This is a complicated process, there are a lot of tiny details and you can easily miss a lot of things. So here you go guys, 10 tips how to easily get a perfect housing in another country. Let's go! Tip number one start solving the housing problem in advance. The best option is to start in six months before you go. Sometimes it can be a little bit early, but it is always better to start in advance so that you can study the market a little bit, the average price of the market for the housing you want. And the crucial point after which you can start worrying about the housing problem is three months before you go, because you actually need three months to, uh, to find the apartment in another country. It actually sometimes takes that long. Tip number two, find a dorm. This tip is mainly for students, but not necessarily because uh, this is the whole thing about socializing. Uh, when you came to another country, just came, you feel uncomfortable, stressed out a little bit and you need to start socializing as soon as possible. And dorm is the best place to do it. I made this mistake twice. In first case, it was Vienna, Austria. I was there with my girlfriend, we were a couple and we didn't want to live uh, in a dorm with other people. Uh, we wanted to start our new life in, an, in a whole apartment, like personal private apar apartment. And actually we struggled a little bit with socializing there because we immediately felt that we are like out of the crowd. The second time here in Amsterdam, we actually with the dog here and there are really a few chances to find a dorm with a dog. But anyway, try to do it in any conditions first. We tried it here first, but we were declined uh, by the dorm. And if you guys go in for a dorm, you should better start as soon as possible. Because in most countries of European Union, they work by the system first come, first serve. Which means if you apply for the dorm first, most probably you will be served and you will get the room in a dorm first. And there is a huge line after you guys, which waits for this apartment, so be fast as possible. Tip number three is to use the local websites for the search of an apartment. If your application was declined by a dorm or you just want to live in your private apartment as we did in Vienna, that's okay, but you have to find the apartment by yourself. In case of a short-term stay, you would probably use Airbnb or Booking, but in case of a long-term stay, you better use the local websites. In Moscow we have Tsian, in Netherlands they have uh, Pararius or Kamernet, and don't rush into paid services. Firstly, always check free websites like Airbnb or Housing Anywhere is a perfect place to find an apartment. And always remember about the possibility to be scammed. For example, when I used Camernet, I almost got scammed twice. Uh, and actually, this is a paid service, so I, I think I cannot recommend you guys to use Camernet at all. Uh, however, Pararius was a pretty helpful local Netherlands website. Anyway, always firstly check Airbnb and Housing Anywhere because very rarely, but sometimes you can find a good apartment for a reasonable price there. Tip number four. 
dig deeper into the district info. Firstly, check the distance to the university or the place of work. Secondly, check the safety of your neighborhood. And this is the main thing. But actually, don't get foolish by those stories about the districts. Uh, sometimes this is just stories. For example, we moved here in Amsterdam Zoidos, which is a former ghetto district. And we were really surprised by this fact and we didn't like deep at Moscow, we didn't dig deeper into this Amsterdam district thing and we were really surprised when we came here because we like we saw this apartment on the website for the price we wanted and we just were oh my god we can go there with the dog let's do it and this was actually a mistake but at the end of the day this district is safe and we were lucky this is just a myth about the ghetto however Remember, you always look for a safe neighborhood. Tip number five. Check if there is a possibility to be registered in an apartment. Sometimes there is a necessity to be registered in the city. For example, if you're a student or if you're an expat, uh, most probably you should be registered in this new country. Uh, you should definitely check it with your university or with your employer. However, this is another filter you should set in your search of an apartment. Believe me, you don't want to get in a story when you came into another country and you found out that you cannot be registered here and you have to start the search from the scratch and you have to live in a hotel during this period of a search and this is a whole new story, guys, and you don't want to get in this story. <coughs> So, just check if there is a possibility to be registered in an apartment. That's easy, it narrows the search a little bit, but this is a must-to-do thing. Okay guys, finally you chose your apartment. Now it is very important, and this is the tip number six, to double check all the stuff which is mentioned in the description of this apartment. It doesn't matter on which website are you looking, you always have to double check it with the landlord. You have to contact him via uh, like a special, special messaging system or just write him an email. But very important to check uh, the main stuff. Like if you travel with a pet, it is really important to check if it is really possible to accommodate the pet, uh, it is really important to check uh, if the final price really includes all the utilities, the gas, water and all this stuff, because very often the price excludes all this stuff and when you see the final price you can be pretty surprised by the amount you are paying for this. And you should also check if it is possible to register in an apartment, as I mentioned before, it is very important, guys. So, tip number seven is to contact with your landlord. And the best option is to have a Skype call with him because you just need to check his adequacy. Uh, and sometimes it, it can help you to avoid some scam, which we almost got to uh, on camera. So, very important, try to contact him. If you cannot contact him uh, via Skype or any other video call, at least have a voice call to him. Tip number eight, and this is a very simple tip. I have a whole Yeva. Yeva is here. Just. <laughs> she came here and <laughs> started licking my hand. Oh, now she's eating me. Yeva. <laughs> this is how you're trying to make our vlog. And you have a pet. Hey, hey, Yeva, Yeva. It hurts a little bit. <laughs> All in his fur. <laughs> Tip number eight. Tip number eight is pretty simple. When you contact the landlord via Skype, voice call, video call, doesn't matter, ask all the questions you want to know. And very important to ask an open question like, what do I also need to know about the apartment? 
like do I need to bring something additional into the apartment? Because sometimes landlords just don't think about little things when they type their, uh, their advertisement. And this is the nice moment to make them think about these little things which make our life a little bit easier and happier. Tip number nine. Check if your room is furnished. I mean the room you are renting or you are going to rent. If it is not furnished or if you don't have like uh, little stuff you are missing right now, like we were missing uh, a table or we were missing some light here, do not try to bring it from, from the place you are now, like from your country, homeland. It, it doesn't worth it. Just go to the local IKEA or however it's called and buy everything there. In most countries in Europe there is IKEA and you can buy everything you want there. And tip number 10, guys! Woohoo! We made it! I'm so proud of you! We are finally here at the last tip! And this is a pretty important one. So finally you are at the apartment, you are looking around and you are not satisfied. You are like, ugh! Where am I, guys? This is an awful place. I don't want to live here for the next year. Ugh. Don't make quick decisions. It is really important to give yourself some time. You just came after airport or train or any other transport you came by. You are stressed out. You just left behind your your like normal, comfortable life. All your relationships, all all the friends and relatives are in another country, you don't have friends here, Ugh, so much stuff to process. And this is a normal thing, you're like feeling uncomfortable. Just give yourself some time, at least three to five days to settle down, to make some, uh, to make some new friends or at least to meet some new people. And afterwards, you will, you will most probably think, this place is pretty okay. Uh, probably I was too, too stressed out at the first like impression. That's it guys. If you enjoyed the episode and the tips I gave you, smash that like button, subscribe if you are not yet. It really means a lot and encourages me to make more content for you. And now, enjoy the B-roll of the apartment and I see you guys in the next episode.